from Paramount Pictures, it's Flash Friday. You said you loved me. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on, if you're a Tom Likas listener. Headlights on, let the guys around you and the chicks around you know that you are a loyal listener, that you support the show, that you're a fanatic fan that you couldn't live without us in the afternoon or the evening, depending on where you are, let everybody know. Show them by turning your headlights on. Crank them. And ladies, of course, you are in a position to reward these folks who are showing their loyalty by showing them your breasts. That gives them the incentive to to keep those headlights on all evening long. So uh, show them your knockers. If you see somebody with headlights on, show them your cans. If you see a nice pair of cans, call us and report to us at 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. And, of course, ladies, if you've got a nice pair of cans and you'd like to show them off and uh, you don't have anyone to show them to, call us as well, 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. Long as you're absolutely fascinating. You're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call us at 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Uh, joining us, and uh, she is not in her office. We'll find out where she is. Jen O'Connell. She's an expert in wireless telephone service. She's the author of The Cell Phone Decoder Ring, a book that's available on Amazon.com and at major bookstores. And uh, her background is in marketing and product development for wireless companies like Verizon and uh, Singular, which, of course, As you know from the incessant advertising, Singular is now the new AT&T. Make a note of that. Jen, thank you for joining us. Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. Now, I hear noise in the background. You're not in your office. No, I am not. I'm actually standing in line to get myself an Apple iPhone. Can I ask you a question? Why are you standing in line to get a telephone? I mean, (laughs) this, this telephone will be available tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Uh, Don't you have a life? I've got an incredibly fantastic life, and one that better include an Apple iPhone in the very near future. And and why is it so important to get this phone the second it goes out the door? Well, the Apple iPhone is the must-have accessory of this summer, and people are standing in line by the hundreds to get their hands on it as quickly as possible. Before before we go on, are you currently working for Apple or AT&T? No, I am an independent expert that works on Wall Street and reports on the wireless industry. All right, I, I'm just curious, though, when you say the must-have accessory. I mean, uh, maybe Paris Hilton has must-have accessories, but the average Star Wars geek who's standing in that line right now waiting to get a phone, uh, they, they don't have must-have accessories. They have their they have their Xbox, they've got their PlayStation, and now they're going to get an iPhone. And it's the same people who wait in line to get a White Stripes album at uh, 12 midnight when they come out. I don't get it. I don't understand why it's so important to have it now. Well, it's one of those mass appeal devices that anyone who's interested in having a multimedia experience or loves social networking, this is a fantastic device based on the new operating system that Apple has come out with, that it's all based 
based on graphics. And I gotta tell you what, I mean, I'm standing in line looking around at all the people. You've got everyone from, you know, the cool surfer dude looking people to the business executives to, you know, just, and everyone in between. I mean, it's just outrageous of the amount of people that are here. But it's just a bunch of hype and you're all a bunch of tools of uh, AT&T and Apple to be standing there in line because really no, is, I mean, it is if you went in tomorrow and bought an iPhone, would you not be as cool? Would If you were able to stroll in off the street, say, on Monday and pick one up, it would, it would, would there be a big deal having to wait for the weekend? Oh, dude, let me tell you what. It is a pecking order in the social society of how quickly you're seen with an Apple iPhone really? in your hands. I never felt so uncool in my life. Uh, you're still cool by me. Okay, very good. Now, uh, what what is the big deal about this phone? Okay, they stapled together an iPod and a phone. What's the big deal? <laughs> You know, it, it doesn't do anything extraordinary. I mean, it is your phone. It is your iPod because you have access to all of your, your iTunes information, whether it's your podcast, your videos, your music. And it's also a really spectacular web browser. The thing, and, and, you know, a pocket PC uh, or any other kind of smartphone can do all those same kind of things. The main difference is in how it does it. The Safari browser gives you a real true, um, true realistic experience of basically as if you're at your desktop. And the graphics experience while you're t while you're navigating through the menu is something like we've never seen before. It's like something right out of the Minority Report or some other kind of futuristic movie. I see. And uh, they're they're getting what about five or six hundred bucks for this phone, right? Yeah, depending on the memory, um, it's four ninety nine for a four gig memory, or it's five ninety nine for eight gig memory, and then there is a special rate plan that goes on top of it. So you know, don't forget, you do have a monthly service charge that's attached to this device. Well, or any cell phone you buy, but uh, eight eight megabytes or eight gigabytes, eight gigabytes or eight megabytes. <laughs> Eight gigs. Eight gigs. Okay. Isn't that like kind of a small amount of storage for an iPod? Don't they have like 20 gigs and 30 gigs and 40 gigs? Yeah, I've got a 30 gig iPod and I have a um, 120 gig laptop. Uh, so eight gig in the grand scheme of things is relatively small if you're comparing it to those types of devices. But uh, but not too shabby when you're comparing against other cell phones. Here's the other thing. Uh, we see how often they come out with a new iPod. Um, by the time when you buy an iPod three weeks later, there's a new iPod and yours is yesterday's iPod. How long will it be before the next generation of iPhone comes out and all you people who stood in line are going to be standing there with $600 doorstops? <laughs> Well, you know, technology never goes out of style, and it's always updating itself constantly. You'll probably see the next version of the iPod come out around holiday time frame where they have some improved features and functionality. But um, but those that are real diehard fans, folks that are using Apple uh, products now, um, are definitely, you know, they don't care. They want it here, and they're here, and they want it now. Now, um, you have worked, uh, so I, I don't want to put you in uh, bad space here. You've worked for Singular. And uh, I, I imagine when it became the new AT&T, were you there? I don't know. But uh, the, 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 my question for you is this. Uh, do people know, do they all know that in order to buy an iPhone and use it, that for the next five years, the only way you can use it is becoming a customer of the new AT&T? Well, it's really funny because sometimes you hear folks that they, they're they full aware of the, of the exclusivity, the multi-year exclusivity that AT&T has of carrying this phone in North America. And then there are other folks that say, yeah, I'm going to buy a SIM on lock phone. I'm going to activate it on T-Mobile. And you're like, oh, sorry, can't do that one. Wow. <laughs> so there's still an education out there. Why well, I imagine there is. Uh, now, I uh, honestly, I, I, have, uh, I have two cell phones. One is with Sprint. One is with Verizon. So I'm no expert on AT&T. And T. I just hear what people say on the street, and, and a number of people complain to me about the quality of singular service. Has AT&T upgraded the network to cover all these features that the iPhone is supposed to have? Well, yes, actually, the, the Apple iPhone works on the Singular Edge network, which is a, it's got modem speeds of equivalent to uh, cable modem or your DSL modem at home. And actually, um, AT&T is working on improving the Edge network, so you do get a little bit faster than normal speed. But the product also has Wi-Fi, so that gets you 56 megabits per second. That's lightning fast. If you need to downgrade down to the Singular Edge network while surfing the web, it's going to be a good experience as well, but it obviously won't be as fast as Wi-Fi but it'll still be a fantastic experience. When you say it's got Wi-Fi, does that mean you'll be able to make phone calls using Wi-Fi as well or just the web function? 
Well, not yet. I'm, I'm sure that there will be a voice over IP, or commonly known as VoIP, uh, client that will be available uh, in the future. Um, there are service providers such as Skype that offer VoIP services, but uh, right now, uh, Singular is the, the or AT&T, excuse me, is the provider that's going to offer VoIP through the iPhone. Now, I was seeing something really interesting about the iPhone in that uh, usually when you go to activate a cell phone, it's like some ancient ritual. With, all, with all, so all kinds of oddball codes they have to type in to activate your telephone. And, and it, it, you stand there for like an hour at the phone store, and the guy is typing in all this code before your phone is finally going to work. Do I understand with the iPhone, all you do is you, you, you have the iTunes software, and you log on to that, and it activates itself? Is that the deal? That's correct. It's probably one of the easiest service activations I've ever seen in my 12 years in the industry. You go straight to um, Apple.com, and it'll allow you to be able to activate service directly over the web. It's very easy. You put in your name and just some personal information about yourself. You select the rate plan, and you're off and running. Does this phone, besides having a nice web browser and uh, uh, they're all virtual buttons that appear on the screen for the uh, the keyboard of the phone or for the uh, keyboard to type, uh, does it have have any uh, features or uh, uh, services that uh, we don't already get from cell phones? Um, any additional services, you mean? Yeah. Is there, so, is there something new about this? Well, you know, it, it, I mean, pretty much what you've seen on the TV commercials is, is what the product is going to offer. And you, you can activate, um, you know, with, with voice and then also having data service. Um, it's got additional applications such as um, Google Maps um, and some navigation um, software, definitely access to your iTunes. But i tell you what, here's the one unique thing about the Apple iPhone that's not available on any other device around the world, and that's called visual voicemail. I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but this is the ability to listen to your voicemail. And you know how normally when you, when you check your voicemail, it's like first come, first serve, right? And it's like work, 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 your friend, work, work, work. And you want to get to the good stuff. Well, visual voicemail allows you to kind of jump around and get to the exact voicemail that you want to listen to in the order that you want. No more first come, first serve. And that's a really cool feature. And that doesn't cost you anything extra. I see. So uh, what's the minimum uh, for a plan uh, to uh, that you would really need? If you were going to sign up with AT&T to use an iPhone, what's the monthly service charge uh, where, where you would also be able to use the web and all the features of the phone? Sure. If you're a new subscriber to AT&T, uh, you can activate a rate plan for fifty nine ninety nine. That gets you 450 minutes. Um, unlimited web browsing, and it also gives you a whole package of text messages as well. That also includes your visual voicemail. All right. And uh, as far as downloading songs, a number of the uh, cell phone companies have you downloading songs uh, over your telephone. Um, are you going to do that with this phone, or is it still going to work the way iTunes has always worked? You use your computer to download the songs, then they transfer to your phone. Yeah, I believe for right now, as of launch, um, the only way to put phone, uh, music on your phones is to tether it to your laptop, whether it's your PC or your Mac. I'm sure future products will allow you to download music over the air, but not right away. Um, but I did have a chance to play with it a little bit before I hopped in line, and i got to tell you what, it's, it's pretty slick. Why didn't they just hand you one so you could go home and get back to work? I know. That would be very nice, and I wouldn't have to stand outside, but thankfully it's a nice night, so it's not too bad. Well, very good. Well, Jen, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Sure, thank you. Appreciate it. Jen O'Connell, her book is called The Cell Phone Decoder Ring. It's available at Amazon.com, other major bookstores. Uh, you can visit her website. It's voiceofwireless.com. And she's one of the people standing in line. She wants to be the first to get that iPhone. I don't get it. I don't get it. That was that was one perky girl. And, and I, I thought she'd be critical of this product, but she, I, she was a cheerleader. I, like, she didn't. I know she said she they, doesn't work for AT&T, you, but I can attend. You're tell, skeptical about I'm that, I'm very skeptical. Well, she owns stock in Apple. There's something going on there. I know. She's not bad looking, by the way. If you check really? out her website, yeah, she's pretty decent looking. But, yeah, but try getting near her. She'd probably be on the phone all the time. It certainly didn't sound very objective. No, it didn't. I was waiting for some kind of criticism, and there was nothing. Uh, well, I, I felt like I was doing an infomercial. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I don't care what she said. I, uh, I'm i not waiting in line for a gadget. And uh, honestly, the idea of buying a gadget that only works on one cell phone company for the next five years, it creeps me out. She was excited. She, was she very couldn't excited. wait. It's fifty nine ninety five or whatever she said. She could. She's very excited. She used to work for uh, 
the new AT&T. Yeah, and yeah. Wouldn't you think she had a connection down there that she could... But they, uh, by the way, who was it that let her play with the phone and then took it away from her? Right. That was kind of silly, that whole concept. Oh, why do I get the feeling this is like uh, that uh, Steve Wozniak? Did you see that Steve is, Wozniak? No. You know who he is, right? He's one of the founders of Apple. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Left uh, like in uh, 19, uh, was it 81? I think he left in 81. Should have hung around. But uh, nonetheless, I guess he still owns a lot of Apple stock and... Uh, uh, Steve Jobs called him and said, your iPhone is coming. You'll have it on Saturday. But this guy decided he had to be in New York at the uh, Apple store in front of the GM building on Fifth Avenue. He had to be in line. So, of course, everybody is going to interview him. And he's standing like wearing a T-shirt that says, uh, it looks like the iPhone logo. It says, I wait. you got to be kidding me. I mean, come on, Waz. What are you doing? You've got to have one tomorrow. Jen's an author, and she apparently um, uh, works on Wall Street. And uh, people really, you know, think uh, think of her as an expert. I would imagine that somebody would have given her one of these phones, and she wouldn't have to stand on that line. Yeah, but I think the thing is, like yeah. Wozniak. Yeah. Wozniak right. is getting a phone tomorrow. Yeah. It's being delivered to his home tomorrow. But he decided he had to be in line. And I get, I, I'm sorry. I don't believe this woman does not have a phone. I think she's got one. She's standing in line doing interviews with jerks like me who are sitting here asking her questions and actually believing she's an objective an analyst. She, <laughs> look at that. Look, Channel 9 right now. They're showing shots of the line of idiots at the Grove I, at the Apple Store. I drove past that earlier today. It was ridiculous. There's people. There's hundreds, maybe thousands of people down there right it's, now. That's insanity. That's, that's total insanity. Look at them all. I mean, you realize next week... You know, you're going to go into that AT&T store, it's going to, you're going to be able to shoot a cannon through there because all these morons will have already gotten their phones. You'll be able to buy these phones. No waiting, nothing. You'll be able to order one online. It'll be delivered to you in two or three days. And these idiots stand in line. And then, of course, Apple and AT&T get all this free publicity. It's, it's <laughs> they're just being used. If you're listening to me in that line right now, get out of the line. Maybe somebody could go down to the Grove and uh, call us up and uh, uh, yell at these people while we, while we hey, have them on the air. That would be great. I know, like we used to do, or, or bring down a boombox. Yeah, no, we had Mimoser do that when people were lined up for yeah. uh, Lady Dies. Course, uh, back then we were on a 10-second yeah. delay, not That's a true. minute and a half <laughs> delay or whatever it is now. That would take forever. But, uh, all right, there you go. Uh, there's your objective uh, view of the new iPhone. <laughs> You know, I, I got that thing in my email. I'd like, well, you know, maybe we should talk to this person about the iPhone. Maybe we'll find something out. But I didn't really, you know, I didn't really find out anything new. I was getting a little edgy with her, you know, hoping I could, like, get a, coax something out of her. She didn't me. mention anything about Flash Friday, by the way. That's that's true. But she's in Atlanta. We're not on in Atlanta. I know. Yeah. All right. We'll take a break. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. Who knows what might happen? Tom, Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm just going to let you know, I just got pulled over for speeding. I was listening to you on the radio. The cop went up to make sure my headlights were on and then just let me go. Oh, man, the cops love this show, and we love them. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likish Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Flash Friday, wide open telephones. Anything goes here. It's Tony on the Tom Likish Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Tony. Uh, you're going to be a little upset with me. I'm a fallen older student. I'm 40 years young. Um, unfortunately, uh, moved away for a little while and... Uh, just started listening to you again, and uh, I just got to ask a couple questions, if I may. I really uh, cherish your advice. I'm presently separated from my smoking hot wife, and she wants to do the river trip only, girls river trip only, and the girls night out thing. And I, I personally think it's uh, an excuse for a woman that's married or in a relationship to just pretend she's single. What do you think? Well, yeah. <laughs> I agree. And? Um, well, she's trying to tell me that uh, I've given up on the marriage and I'm not willing to uh, 
to fight for it. And I'm thinking, well, you know what, if you want to, you know, pretend you're single at the river and uh, go out on ladies' night, you know, like ladies only and stuff like that, I think that's just for single women that want to get, you know, laid. Oh, well, so. that's what it is. That's what Girls Night Out is all about. If she needs to go out to clubs, that tells you what you need to know. So I did the right thing by serving the bitch with... Uh, divorce papers a month and a half ago yes you did and you see had you followed my instruction you would not be where you are now yeah i know she i tell you what she's a single mom hot looking smoking hot looking single mom firm tight you know what but i mean uh you know what uh lot, I, I just came back from havasu last weekend and i've seen more young 20 something year olds all over me and all my buddies on his htm you know and uh we had a great time, you know what I'm saying? I know. And I'm thinking there's a lot of truth to what you say, too. I went back to school, and uh, I work for myself, independent contractor. I make over six figures myself, and uh, I'm going up the ladder. Good for you. And what they said, what did you say? You said uh, the more you make, the better uh, babe you get or something? Better, younger, it, hotter, yes, yes. so true. I traded in the old uh, Chevy, uh, got me a really nice... Uh, Beamer and uh, now uh, looking to get a nice uh, other, uh, uh, what do you call it, a Hummer? Yeah. And uh, I tell you, the babes are just flocking like you wouldn't believe. Of course they are. But, Tony, what made you think you knew more than the professor? Stupidity. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I just was stupid. I'm a fallen uh, student, and I, I think for all the guys that are listening, I think uh, they got to be listening to you. I just wish you were around when I uh, was a lot younger because uh, thanks to you, I went and deliberately had two vasectomies because the first one grew back. And you know what? Yeehaw. Grew back? I've never yeah, heard of such a thing. It's, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. It fused back, believe it or not. And uh, I knocked up a gal. Broken, broken condom, I might add. No. Excuse me. Sorry. And and so she had the kid, of course. Uh, luckily for me, and don't wish this on any woman, but uh, she had a miscarriage. So uh, was that after? Was protect. that after you took her to the hot tub to celebrate? <laughs> no, I learned my lesson, and I went and got another uh, vasectomy, and this time made sure it was done right, two inches each side. So. Uh, Definitely made sure uh, no more no more chances. I'm 40 years young, and now I've got nothing but 20-something-year-olds all over the place. By the way, how did your girl react to being dumped? She's pissed, royally pissed off, doing everything, trying to get me back, trying to get me jealous. And I said, you know what? No guy's going to be interested in you because you're a single mom. Yeah, you got your fake think you're all that he's gonna hit it and forget it you know what i'm saying so you know forget it no nobody's gonna hook up with you unless you get some older guy than older than me or whatever that can't get any better you know so you whatever and i've moved on i've got like four babes on the go right now one smoking hot from uh, newport beach rich daddy she she's she's not as rich as paris hilton but let me tell you this she's driving a brand new porsche uh uh what do you call it Cayenne or whatever, S or whatever, and smoking hot blonde babe. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. She must be good at something. She's 26 years old, 38 double Ds. Yeah, who bought her that car? <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Really? Yeah, really. Dad, wow. Daddy's some rich real estate mortgage broker or something. And, oh, I, I, I met her at Havasu and uh, Memorial Weekend and... Yeehaw, that's all I got to say, man. I'm so lucky. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Tony. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Yes. Big fan, long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Hey, wanted to talk to you about the iPhone. Um, I, I understand why people are standing in line. You do? If, why? Because they have no lives? The person that has to have... It's the first be on the first on your block, which, get, don't get me wrong, I'm not. Why do you understand that? Because... Apple, historically, every time they've issued a new product, their manufacturing will not keep up with the hype and the marketing. Please, you know what, you know what I say? You know weekend. what I want to say to all the people in line to buy an iPhone uh, right now? Get a sex life, okay? <laughs> it, like I said, you got to have it It's right Friday away. night. You know what? People who have a sex life are out getting laid tonight. They're not waiting in line at the AT&T store or the Apple store. They're not. I, I hear you. I hear you. But uh, Mac... 
These are all the people who have nobody to hook up with. They've got nobody to talk to once they activate the phone. (laughs) So true. You know what they're going to be doing? They're going to be on the phone going, I'm on my iPhone. Can you hear me? Isn't this great? You will not be able to walk into an Apple store on Monday and buy one. So tonight... Tonight at midnight, while I'm in mid-thrust, somebody's going to be, uh, hey, I got my new iPhone. You want me to come over? I'll show it to you. Yep, and your your, your phone will work just as well as theirs does. Uh, I won't need a phone tonight because I'm hooking up as soon as I get out of here. You got it, man. Hey, blow me up, man. I'll blow you up, baby. Hey. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. What is it about this show that people just want to reveal their innermost dirty secrets? I don't know. It's like the, the Tom Likas confession. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show, Flash Friday. Headlights on, man, ladies. If you see a nice pair of headlights, let's see a nice pair of knockers. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Well, finally, um, now the uh, the iPhone haters are writing in. <laughs> the people who are on my side on this. And by the way, I didn't even know all this about the iPhone. I've known some of the uh, the negatives, but a listener named Greg writes in and says, um, just puts bullet points. Web browser does not support Java. You don't know how often you use Java, by the way, in your browser until you don't have it or it isn't operating properly. No IM capabilities. Greg says you need Java to use online instant messaging, but uh, iPhone doesn't support Java. No MP3s as ringtones. That's probably one of those copyright issues, so Apple can make the record companies happy. So you can't use any of your 4,000 songs or whatever it is as a ringtone. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose to some extent here? Wouldn't you think that would be one of the features, like any one of your library of songs could be your ringtone? Nope. None of them. No stereo Bluetooth streaming. No copy and paste for text. Are you kidding me? I can't copy and paste? Of course, I usually use that with instant messages. I only Then I only have to type, what are you wearing, one time, and I put it in 12 boxes at the same time. It won't be a problem on the iPhone. The battery is not removable. Apple says after three to 400 charges, you have to send it in. And the SIM card is not accessible. It's built in. So if you're going to another country, good luck figuring this out. Wow. I'm getting a few of these now. A lot of the uh, the anti-iPhone forces are writing in. But I happen to believe, again, all the people uh, waiting in line on a Friday night to buy an iPhone. <laughs> See, people are in line for iPhone. Uh, tonight, though, I'm, I'm going to do something different. I'm, I'm going to be going after the iBone. Slightly different product. Costs less than $500. <laughs> People who have an iPhone don't have iBone. <laughs> Is there a line for iBone? Oh, there's a line at my front door for iBone. <laughs> User-friendly? User friendly? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I support Java, especially if your skin is Java colored. I really like that. <laughs> Would you rather have the iBone or the iPhone? I guarantee you nobody in line for an iPhone has an iBone. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Any early adopters for that? No, they have to wait till they're 18. You don't want them to be too early adopters. 1-800-5800-866. That's the telephone number on the Tom Likas Show. Let's go to Addison on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. <laughs> uh, I just want to say I love your show. You get some of the funniest callers. But, uh, are you, are you, you uh, did, uh, do you have an iPhone or an iBone? I have an iPhone currently. All right, just checking. Yes. <laughs> iPhones are much cheaper. 
Um, anyway, I actually have a question, and I've been wanting to ask you this for quite a while, actually, since the Virginia Tech massacre. Um, you, on the following days of that event, asked something, or actually stated something about religion, and you got a bunch of callers in, and I couldn't help but wondering, do you screen out all of the religious people with any intelligence? Because all you get are, like, retarded fanatics that can't argue their own, you know, points. That's That's mostly what you get when you talk about religion. Oh. Retarded fanatics. Yeah. Okay, but, like, what's up with all the intelligent people who are, like, <laughs> well, semi-intelligent people coming in and calling, like, talking about non-religious points to what you were saying. What? It seems like the, those who are religious in Colin are idiots, and those who are not religious in Colin, they think a bit more level-headedly. What does that tell you? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I'm not religious, but, like, I, at the same time, could argue their points better than they could. <laughs> Well, uh, you know? I uh, I believe that uh, pro there are probably more intelligent people who could argue their points better than they can. Uh, but even so, um, there are certain facts missing, certain gaps in logic All that right, even intelligent man. people can't overcome. Now, by the way, Addison, I hate to bust you here, but you told our screener something far more edgy and uh, outrageous, uh, you tried telling our screener, and I'm going to quote you now because he typed as you talked. Okay. You told him that you can argue with me and that I screen smart people out. Yeah, I still think that. Well, you, but why didn't you say it to me? Are you a coward? No. Are you too, uh, you're afraid to have an argument with me because I don't think you believe what you said. Well, you are the famous Tom Likas. Well, so, why, then why would you uh, make such a statement if, if, in reality, you can't argue with me? You can't hold your own with me. You're afraid to try to hold your own with me. Why would you be, oh, Mr. Brave when you're talking to Dino, and then you get on the air with me, and suddenly you're chicken out? So you're telling me you do screen out people? Oh, no. I, you got through, didn't you? I guess. Let's find out how smart you are. Okay. How smart are you? Smart enough to go to college. Ooh. Yeah, I know. That's a very exclusive club. Yeah, uh, true. Uh-huh. And uh, what is it that you can argue with me about? Let's let's see you beat me in an argument. I'm waiting. Okay. Um, you said that the Virginia Tech massacre a long time back. Do you remember this, like, time when you were, like, talking about how this is proof that God does not exist? Uh, well, among the things I said, yes. Okay. Well, like... How is that proof that God exists? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, God never says bad things won't happen. Well, then what's the point of praying to a God? Well, that's a little beyond that part. But that no, 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 no. You're the one who can argue anything, Addison. You're the one who's so intelligent, such a master of logic Careful and use of the English master. language. I and so now I'd like anything. to hear you explain to me why one should bother praying. If God does whatever the hell he wants or stays out of whatever the hell he wants, stay out of. I don't know. Maybe it'll get you into heaven. What, what do you mean? I don't know. I don't know is not the answer you get from an expert debater. Okay, fine. I know. If you pray, you'll get into heaven when you die. How about that? Not necessarily. Why not? How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> well, you're asking me what the point is, and I'm telling you. Well, as, according to religion, you pray and you get into heaven, right? I, I'm I'm not religious. You tell me. You're the expert, son. Okay. Well, uh, all I'm trying to say is I still don't see how the Virginia Tech massacre is proof that God does not exist. The Bible says he's all-powerful, yes, but maybe he doesn't care enough. Maybe he doesn't. Well, it doesn't say maybe he doesn't care enough. It says he's all-powerful. He sees all, knows all, knows where everybody is. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. You're right. All right, so if he is, why would he allow good people to get blown up? Uh, maybe there's a bigger cause behind it. Really? So what What would be the good reason to let people be shot to death? Who knows? Maybe some of the Who knows? Well, Who knows is not a good response from someone who's an expert arguing. I know. The people who got shot, 
were going to give birth or maybe even become themselves really bad people. Future Hitlers, who knows? I see. So everyone who was shot deserved to get it is what you're saying. Mm, maybe. Really? Would you care to uh, stand out in some public place, say hello, or your first name and last name? Hi, my name is Addison Jones, or whatever you are. And I believe the people who got shot at Virginia Tech got it for a reason. They deserved it. Well, I mean... Would you care to say that? According to religion, if I was trying to support it, I would. <laughs> really? Do, do you believe that? Not really. Uh-huh. Remember, my only point was that I mean, arguments come from religious fanatics. Well, you're, you're supposedly one of the smart ones, and we let you through on the phone, and now, of course, it becomes a foregone conclusion that once again we've let someone through who isn't as smart as he thinks he is. <laughs> Maybe now you can see why the other people sound so stupid. Yeah, well, I guess so. Kind of like you. Sure do sound stupid, don't I? Yes, you do. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Why would he think I would screen that call out? <laughs> Every time, the, the, by the way, I want to tell everybody listening, the surest way to get through the screener is to say that you're smarter than I am or that I screen out all the intelligent people. <laughs> that that puts you right to the top of the list. <laughs> Just like that call. You screen the intelligent people out. Yeah, well, I let you through. <laughs> Now the other either means that you think you're intelligent or you're as stupid as the other callers. There's no winning that one. That's a logical conundrum. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Yeah, that's right, Dean. They say that I'm afraid of the smart callers. When they say that, they mean smart callers like themselves. Then they get on the air and they sound like Addison, who was backpedaling before he even got on the air because he told Dean. Oh, yes, he was Mr. Mr. Man, Mr. Brave. He's telling Dean, oh, yeah, I can I'll argue Tom. And then he gets out of the air and he's like a little like a little boy. He starts to melt. He was hoping I wouldn't bring that up. 1-800-5800-TOM, Arturo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I just wanted to call and uh, see what your... Uh like about uh, immigration reform? What, how do you see that? How well, you see that getting denied. Well, the well, the main reason it was denied is because the president is uh, one of the least popular political figures of the last uh, thirty years. Well, yeah. and he was the main supporter of this bill. So that's why they didn't pass it because of because of uh, the president. You think? I don't think the president can get anything passed right now. The surest way to kill any legislation is for George Bush to support it. Damn, that sucks, huh? Uh, it does suck because we do need immigration reform, and we do need to do something about the people who are in limbo. We do need to do something about that. And you know where I stand on that uh, that issue. Um, uh, I think we have to uh, provide uh, amnesty, and I'm going to say amnesty for the 12 million people who are here, have them pay a fee or a fine or whatever, and uh, move on with our lives and then try to uh, seal up the borders for the future. Yeah, I think I think the same way. I think if they... If they make everybody pay that's over here, then, you know what I'm saying, there would be no negativity about immigrants coming because I got a, a lot of family that are immigrants, and they can't do nothing with their lives. They got to sit at the corner because they can't find a job. So mm -hmm. you have a bunch of people standing at home depot that can't work because I guess they don't let them, you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, but the thing is that many of them do get jobs at home depot. But then they've got no car insurance because they don't want to write their names down or their addresses. Yeah. And these are the people who have accidents with us in the middle of the day, and then they've got no driver's licenses or no insurance or both. And we get screw painted, and they, they should have just passed the bill or at least, you know, made something up so they can get some papers so they can get insurance. And If you charge the $5,000 fee or fine to the 12 million illegal aliens currently in the country, uh, you'd have six million, six hundred million dollars, six hundred million. That's that's a lot of money. Plus, everybody would be on the books. Yep, all and the, everybody would have to pay what they got to pay. I mean, I I think people hung themselves. I mean, they they are so hateful uh, about uh, people from other countries that they blind themselves to seeing what benefits they would be to providing amnesty to everybody who's here. It's really outrageous. Stupid. What are we going to do?
or email tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.